On the first day of school, there's an awful lot of things that have to happen. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to take care of the syllabus and pronouncing all the students' names and all that business. And I try very hard to save about the last three minutes of class for this chemical demonstration. If I do that, I know that I can send them out the door with a memorable experience. It really doesn't matter what I've talked about for the first 40 minutes of class. If I can do this in the last few minutes, this is what's going to make the dinner table that night at home for the students. And my goal every day in chemistry is to make the dinner table uh, because I find if I can win the kids over early on, uh, that's what makes all the difference when we get to the harder material. This is a demonstration on the first day that uh, in thinking about things, my goal is all students feel that they're a part of something pretty special. And so I try to lower their expectations maybe during the first 40 minutes, and then I supercharge them on their way out the door so that they head off to their next class going, wow, I can't wait to go back tomorrow. I wonder what he's got planned. So that's the goal anyway. What I have here, and, and as I present it to my students, I don't go through any of the chemistry. This would be one of the times where we're after the wow factor. I want to get in there, crank them up, and we'll teach them the chemistry starting tomorrow. In this beaker, I have the indicator uh, phenol red. In this beaker, I have Epsom salts, or a one molar magnesium sulfate solution. And over here, I have a one molar copper sulfate solution. And this will be the grand finale, the whoosh bottle. The whoosh bottle, the way that I like to do it is I use 70% isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. And what I, there's been a lot of press about this demonstration uh, for the wrong reasons. The first thing that I do each year is I inspect the water bottle to make sure that I don't see any star cracks or anything like that. Um, because it's not the type of demonstration where you buy it one time and then it's one of those for 30 years later you throw away the bottle when you retire. This is one that you want to make sure you double check, especially if you're in a school with multiple chemistry teachers or multiple people who could be using the bottle. So this is a water bottle. I don't see any star cracks, which look like somebody would poke a little knife in there, any weakening of the plastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in uh, a small quantity, I would say about 50 milliliters or so, of isopropyl alcohol, and I'm just going to swirl that around. The swirling process for me does two things. One, it heightens the excitement. What is he doing? What and why is there a shield in front of the demo table? For me, again, it's all part of the last three minutes or so of class, and I don't want them to know what's going on. A lot of times I'll say, you know, I don't think I added enough. Let me add a little bit more. Immediately, students start to believe he really had enough in there. Now his goal is to explode something even more dramatically, which is not the case, but they don't have to know that at this point. We're swirling it around to get it to evaporate. And the last thing that I do turns out to be pretty important. I'm going to flip this over so that I coat the neck of this bottle with the alcohol. The 70% isopropyl alcohol burns slower, as you might expect, compared to the 100% isopropyl alcohol. So it's a little bit more difficult to light. Okay. So that's ready to go. As part of the shtick, I guess you might say, with the demo, uh, it seems like there's something I'm forgetting here. Oh yeah, the shield, that's right. The students in the front row tend to be most appreciative of having a shield between the bottle and the front row. We've got this ready to go. The last part of it that I kind of like to do is I say, you know, we're starting something very special today. And over the next 180 school days, we're all going to be a part of something very, very special. I don't know where we're going necessarily on every day, but I know where I'm taking you. And one thing that ties us all together is that we are all 
in the United States of America. Usually they have to stop and think, like, is that as good as you can get in terms of a common factor for all of us? But it is something very, very special. And so as they're looking at the clock, thinking, gosh, what's he going to do? Is he going to have time to get this in? Here we go. We're going to have the lights down, please. And here we go. This is ammonium hydroxide. And here we go. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. It's all in the wrist. 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 And you can see we have the red, the white, the blue. And again, if we're paying close attention to the clock, there's not much time left. So I like to come out, say, here. And it's the Olympic torch. And here we go. And... Welcome to chemistry. <laughs> this is going to be your favorite class of the day. Come back tomorrow and I'll show you why that is. <laughs>